China Current is a weekly news talk show from China to the world. We cover viral news about China every week and also give you the newest updates on China's cutting edge technologies. Let's get started. Welcome to China Currents, your weekly news report on what's happening in China. I'm Lisa. In this episode, China has issued a ban that could cripple all U.S. high-tech weapons. The Philippine Coast Guard vessels deliberately collided with a Chinese ship. Australia betrayed their promise to Hong Kong separatists. Taiwan Island is about to lose its largest diplomatic tie in the Americas. A monkey from China has set several world records in the gaming industry. Let's start with a new Chinese law that could potentially neutralize all American high-tech weapons. In a joint statement on the 15th of August, China's Ministry of Commerce and the General Administration of Customs said China will impose export controls on antimony products, including antimony ores, metals, oxides, and other rare antimony compounds, and has kicked off a comprehensive sanction on antimony against the U.S. Antimony is known for its wide use, especially in the military sector. For instance, antimony trioxide is commonly used as a flame retardant in aircraft, rockets, and missiles. It is also used in production of military equipment such as armor-piercing shields, explosives, night vision goggles, and nuclear weapons. An indium antimonide is primarily used to manufacture high-performance sensors and array. Seekers. These seekers play a crucial role in guiding missiles, which are highly effective against fourth-generation fighter jets. The media has long emphasized the critical role of antimony in U.S. military production. Experts have urged China, the world's dominant supplier of antimony, to limit its export to the United States. This call stems from America's heavy reliance on China's antimony exports and processing capabilities, which are essential for manufacturing advanced military equipment such as stealth fighters, missiles, and night vision devices. China is responsible for over 80% of global annual antimony supply, making it the world's largest producer. Russia is the second largest, accounting for 7% of the global output, while the United States produces. Less than one percent. Given this data, any export restrictions imposed by China could significantly disrupt the supply chain of the U.S. military industry. In response to this vulnerability, the U.S. Congress has asked the Pentagon to strengthen its strategic reserves of critical minerals, with antimony being a top priority for the national defense stockpile. The U.S. House Armed Service Committee has also expressed concerns about potential supply chain disruption from both Russia and China in a recent report. The committee has urged the Department of Defense to develop policies for recycling used batteries in order to recover precious. Metals, rare earth elements, and other strategically important materials. Historically, the United States sourced antimony from a gold mine in Idaho, but that mine closed down in 1997. According to a 2020 report from the U.S. Geological Survey, there are currently no active antimony mines operating within the United States. China's statement on the export controls highlighted that a key rationale is to prevent the proliferation of nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, aligned with its long-standing efforts to fulfill non-proliferation obligations. Following the suspension of nuclear arms control talks with the U.S. in April, prompted by Washington's arms sales to Taiwan Island. China's tightened controls on antimony export can be viewed as an extension of its countermeasures against the United States. Given the size of U.S. nuclear arsenal, China can impose significant constraints by limiting access to key materials essential for production. This move represents a shift from China's previously more open approach to supplying critical materials to the U.S. In recent years, Japan and other developed countries in Europe paid high attention to the strategic reserve of antimony. Placing it on critical mineral list as global antimony ore reserves dropped from 2 million tons in 2021 to 1.8 million tons in 2022, declining ore grades and resource depletion have led to a continuous fall on global antimony production. 
Although high-tech weapons rely heavily on rare metals and resources, antimony also has important applications in the field of biology and medicine field. Antimony-based drugs such as meclomine antimonate are also considered the primary treatment for leishmaniasis, an infectious disease caused by parasites. China's new export control law may help ensure that this precious resource is used to save lives rather than for military purpose. Despite China's ongoing efforts to promote global security, the Philippine Coast Guard ramped up regional tensions. On the 19th of August, two Philippine Coast Guard vessels entered Chinese waters in the South China Sea without authorization from the Chinese government. The Chinese Coast Guard claimed that the Philippine ship ignored repeated warnings and deliberately collided with a Chinese vessel in an unprofessional and dangerous manner. The footage released by China's Coast Guard showed the Philippine vessel numbered 4410 sailing alongside the Chinese ship before suddenly turning towards it, causing damage to the Philippine vessel. Interestingly, the video also showed at least two individuals on the Philippine vessel carrying professional camera equipment along with several US journalists. This was later confirmed by a report from ABC News on the 19th, which stated that some of the videos and photos were taken by journalists from a US television network. These American journalists were likely on board because they trusted the professionalism of the Philippine Marine Time Forces, given their recent joint exercise with the US Navy. However, the incident has now called that trust into question. Less than a day after the ramming incident, US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan condemned China during a phone call with its Philippine counterpart. Sullivan also reaffirmed the $500 million in US foreign military financing to the Philippines under the 2024 Indo-Pacific Security Supplemental Appropriation Act. This bill, signed into law by President Biden on the 24th of April, aims to boost the Philippine military's capability to escalate tension in the South China Sea. According to reports by the Philippine Star, Philippine President Marcos expressed his gratitude for the U.S. military aid during the meeting with a U.S. congressional delegation on the 8th of August. Marcos emphasized the importance of this aid in addressing new challenges in the region. The recent actions of the Philippine government have indeed created new challenges for China-Philippine relations, especially in terms of trade. Data released by General Administration of Customs of China in July showed a new record with the total value of China's imports and exports reaching $2.96 trillion in the first half of the year, a year-on-year -year increase of 7.1%. However, in the first four months of 2023, the bilateral trade between China and Philippines dropped by 10.31%. It remains to be seen whether the United States will compensate the Philippines for this trade loss in the 2025 Indo-Pacific Security Supplemental Appropriation Act. Compared with the Philippines, Australia is clearly more pragmatic in its approach to China relations. On May 2020, the UK and Australia promised to provide asylum to Hong Kong separatists holding British national overseas passports, who had violated China's national security law in Hong Kong. As of February 2024, the UK Home Office estimated that there are around 2.9 million BNO passport holders in Hong Kong. However, data revealed by the South China Morning Post on August 14 shows that the approval rates for asylum applications from Hong Kong are extremely low in both Australia and the UK. Over the past five years, Australia has reviewed only 584 asylum applications, with just five being approved. People seeking asylum usually need to prove that they are unable to live safely in their own countries. For these Hong Kong separatists, their actual situation in China makes it difficult for them to meet Australia's protection approval criteria. Earlier this year, there were signs of improving relations between China and Australia. On 29th of May, China lifted its ban on five Australian beef exporters. This was followed by Chinese Premier Li Qiang's official visit to Australia on the 15th of June during which both nations agreed to strengthen their bilateral relationship with a focus on expanding cooperation across various sectors. 
This context suggests a more nuanced and complex dynamic between China, the UK, Australia and the Hong Kong separatists seeking asylum. While the UK and Australia have made public promises, the actual asylum approval rates indicate the challenges these separatists face in successfully relocating. The improving China-Australia relations also provide a backdrop to these developments. Interfering with China's internal affairs has never been a good deal, but it seems Paraguay is only just beginning to realize this. According to Reuters, on 22nd of August, Paraguayan president is reconsidering his country's diplomatic ties with Taiwan authorities in pursuit of trade deals with mainland China. In an interview with a Japanese outlet, the Paraguayan president admitted he is under pressure from domestic agricultural groups, urging Paraguay to cut off diplomatic relations with Taiwan Island. A 2023 report by the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean stated that trade between China and Latin America expanded 35-fold from 2000 to 2022, reaching nearly 500 billion US dollars in 2022. In contrast, the Economist reported that from 2019 to 2023, Taiwan authorities have only provided Paraguay with $150 million in aid. An article in The Economist on the 4th of July highlighted that the price of Paraguayan loyalty is rising. The previous administration asked Taiwan for $1 billion in investment, but did not receive it. Meanwhile, the director of the Millennium Institution for China and Latin America Studies, Francisco Erdner, stated that Paraguay's relationship with Taiwan cost the country more than 1% of its GDP annually due to missed investment and credits from China. Next up, let's focus on a monkey from China who has recently left a lasting impression on global gamers. On the 20th of August, the Chinese video game Black Miss Wukong launched globally and quickly gained massive popularity. Within just one hour of its release, the game reached over 1 million concurrent players online, surpassing the records set by high-profile titles like Cyberpunk 2077 and Elder Ring, according to a Bloomberg report. By the 23rd, Black Miss Wukong had officially announced over 10 million copies sold across all platforms, with peak concurrent online players exceeding 3 million. This is the first time in history of Steam, the world's largest game distribution platform, that a single-player game has reached such a large number of concurrent players. The overwhelming demand for download even caused some servers to crash temporarily. The game also gathered significant attention from Chinese state media due to the development team's meticulous recreation of 36 real-life ancient Chinese buildings, 27 of which are located in Shanxi province, including a Guan temple, the third earliest preserved timber structure in China. Today, the temple is a part of UNESCO World Heritage Site and is undergoing restoration. However, in the game, players can not only appreciate the stunning scenery of the temple, but they will also engage in battles against the game's monsters within its historically significant location. This effort to preserve and promote Chinese cultures has earned widespread recognition from Chinese investors. Following the game's release, the stock of the publishing company surged by 40% in just four days. The success of the game Wukong also spurred the growth of the entire Chinese gaming industry, with the gaming sector of the Chinese stock market rising by 1.71% on August 20th. Former World of Warcraft team leader praised Wukong as a great victory in a tweet. While the game has been praised by investors and industry insiders, the BBC reported that it included anti-feminist propaganda, fetishization and other content that instigate negative discourse. In response, Chinese netizen remarked, Black Miss Wukong is like chocolate. Everyone has their own taste, but is lethal if a dog eats it. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Current. If you have any thoughts or comments about our show, please reach us at the email address below. We look forward to hearing from you and see you next time.